In this video, all I really want to do is give you an overview of the key properties and settings of the Fracture Tool window. So I'm going to jump into the content browser. I'll open up our Fractured Static Mesh and then immediately jump into the Fracture Tool here from the Static Mesh Editor's toolbar. Now let's just kind of start at the top and work our way down. Most of these are fairly straightforward. Some of them may take a little bit of explanation to really wrap your head around. But at the very top, we have the Generate Chunks group, which has the Num Chunk slider. This tells you really how many chunks you're going to get. That's really all there is to it. If you want more chunks, slide it to the right. If you want less chunks, slide to the left. Do keep in mind that the more chunks your object has, the more expensive uh, it's going to be in terms of calculation. Now down from here, we have the Chunk Shape. This allows you to influence the overall shape of your chunks by applying a bias to the internal clipping planes that are cutting up your object. For instance, right now, with an equal bias of 1 in X, Y, and Z, which is what these three uh, fields represent, we get these you know, fairly uniform chunks that you see here. As a matter of fact, to make them real easy to see, uh, let's go ahead and click Show Cut Solid. So they're all fairly square. Some are longer than others, but overall generally uniform. If we want these to be uh, more longish, like say we really want some elongated uh, splits, we could take our X and Y and set those down to 0.1. So I'm just going to 0.1 and 0.1. So now check it out. The Z direction, which is our vertical direction, is getting more of a bias. So our chunks are a lot longer in their overall width. We're getting a whole bunch of flat chunks. And by changing the overall uh, bias of these planes, you can change the shape of your chunks. That's really all there is to it. Now I'm going to set these all back to their default 0.1 values. Now you can also modify the points of a chunk. And this is something that you kind of need. There's two separate ways to go about this. We can select a single chunk. And you'll notice when we select a chunk, like let's grab this guy up here at the corner. We get a little translation widget up here near the top as well as all these different numbers. Now, as I mentioned in the previous video, these numbers represent how connected or how much of the surface is touching each neighboring piece. However, there's also this little tiny transform widget. And as I slide this, we can literally update the shape of that chunk. So you'll notice as I slide it to the right, more of the influence for that chunk is sliding rightward. So you have a lot of control here. And what I'm doing is I'm moving the chunk's origin, which is kind of like its center of positioning for how the chunk is calculated. Now that brings us back to the modify points group. What this allows us to do is to move around the origins of all of these selected chunks at once. Or if we deselect, we can actually do it to everybody. So if I click randomize, you'll notice there's a slight shift in all of our chunks. That's because right now, all of those origins are being moved in a random direction by a random amount around 0.1 in X, Y, and Z. If we want a lot of motion, we can set this a lot higher, say to uh, 10 by 10 by 10, and click randomize. And now you'll notice you get much more vast changes in the overall uh, look of your chunks. Now, if you want, you can also click move to faces. What this is going to do is take those origins and slide them out to the outer edges of your surface. This will help keep you from having uh, too many chunks that disappear uh, because they're completely internal to the mesh. Now, I'm just going to re-click generate and put everything kind of back to its general positioning. Now, next we have chunk options. For this to really be useful, a chunk has to be selected. So let me just grab any chunk. Let's grab like maybe this guy right here. Actually, let's get somebody that I, there you go. I just want to make sure that somebody we can see is being highlighted. So this yellow chunk here. Now, if you don't want a chunk to be able to be destroyed, you can switch off destroyable. That chunk will remain no matter what a player throws at it. If you want it to be able to be destroyed, obviously just leave this on. A support chunk is kind of like an integral piece, which helps hold your fractured static mesh together. What it does is the fractured mesh will look down through all of the connected chunks reaching all the way through the mesh and make it'll verify that it's connected to a support chunk. As soon as that connection is lost, the entire surface will fall off. Now, what does that mean to you? Well, I can actually demonstrate it probably easier than I can explain it. Let me jump into our level 
and I died. So let me jump over here to a, another area. There we go. Now, earlier in the previous video, I set the bottom of this mesh up to be a support chunk. So if I saw off about a third of the way up the column, you'll notice the entire top falls down. That's because all of these chunks realized that they had lost connection to the support chunk, and so they immediately went dynamic, so to speak, and fell over. So that's how the support chunk system works. Now finally, you have spawn no physics. That means that if you were to destroy this chunk, it would just disappear. It wouldn't spawn a little physical copy of itself to bounce around the level. Now down from here, we have chunk selection. This allows us several different things we can select. We could, say for instance, select the bottom like you saw us do earlier. We can select the top. We can grow that selection. We can shrink that selection. And we can click invert selection. So it's just little tools to help you select chunks more easily. Down from here, we have several different viewing controls. Now these allow us to view individual chunks or certain groups of chunks just by moving some things around. So currently, you'll notice that this is set to 48. If you're playing with this slider and you notice it's just not working for you, it's probably because you need to slice. What I'm going to do just to be on the safe side is just click slice again. And once that's done, now we have 45 total chunks, even though we told it 50. Actually, it says 46, excuse me. Uh, the viewing group has a slider to show to control which chunk you want to see, but it's zero-based. So in this case, we'll see 0 to 45. Now, as I slide this all the way up, as soon as I actually start sliding it, everything updates. Currently, the show mode is set to view only. So now it's showing chunk 0, then chunk 1, chunk 2, 3, 4, and so on. So you can slide through and look at each individual chunk. Now, to really help drive that home, let me click off show cuts. So here we are just looking at individual pieces. We can show all but, which will show us everything but whichever one is selected within the slider. So as I slide up, you'll notice individual chunks are disappearing. Then we can switch that to view up to. So now as we slide this down, more and more chunks will continue to disappear until we only have one chunk. That's just a way to help you kind of visualize uh, the overall cutting. Now if you want to show everything again, just take view up to and just slide it all the way up. Now, of course, we have show cuts, which is pretty straightforward. Show cuts solid, which just makes those a little bit more solid, a little easier to see one chunk from another. Show visible cuts. This is just going to show you any cuts that are visible. And then finally, we have show, uh, I'm sorry, slice color mode, which if I turn this on, currently this is set to random. If we set it to support chunks, it will color code any support chunks. So I guess I should set some of those. Let's click on select bottom. And I'll switch off destroyable, set those to support chunks. And then if we deselect, you'll notice the support chunks are now red. And if we show cut solid, then there you go. We can also set that to show destroyable chunks and any no physics chunks, which would be any chunks that are just going to disappear and not spawn a little physical copy of themselves. And finally, we have show core. Now, core is something I'm going to show a little bit separately. Just in, in essence, a core is a separate static mesh model that you can place in the center of your fractured static mesh just to help it look like it's got something holding it together. So for instance, we could have a static mesh model of you know, like a piece of steel in the center of this column or maybe some steel rebar or something like that to help it look like it's got some sort of support structure inside of it. That core will remain inside. So as the pieces break away, it'll expose the core. You can also have the cutting system take that core into account so that the pieces look like they would actually conform around that core. But that's something we'll talk about a little bit later. And that involves us actually using the core group to add a separate core and to uh, remove it and so on. So that's all of the various settings for the Fracture tool. Let's go ahead and just click on Slice just to wrap this up. And now we can close the Fracture Tool window, we can close out of the Static Mesh Editor, and we can close the Content Browser. However, do keep in mind that I have now made a change to our Fractured Static Mesh. It's got a whole different slice pattern now, which does require that I rebuild lighting. So that's a quick walkthrough of all the settings for the Fracture Tool, and that will wrap things up for this video. Thanks a lot.